everybody, and welcome to another episode of Death By, where contestants will earn reps for their arguments for a chance to stand on top of the podium pedestal. I am your host, Lauren Khalil. Whoever I decide has the best argument through the final round will earn 30 seconds to talk about a topic of their choosing. On today's episode, we have two-time Affiliate Cup champion and seminar staff head trainer, James Hobart. Welcome back to the show. We have CrossFit Games athlete and proven coach, Tim Paulson. And we have semifinal athlete, Aaliyah Miller. Welcome back to the show. Great to have you all. We are so close to the CrossFit Games. I cannot believe that we're almost there. It's wild. Is everybody on this call going? (laughs) <laughs> you, I feel like you say that just to make me feel bad. Oh, <laughs> that, that I tee it up to bully you into going? I'm not going, actually, and I'm kind of bummed. I think it'll be really cool, new location and all that stuff, but I won't be there. So what's your excuse, James? Why are you not coming? I'm competing in a mountain bike race in Colorado. That's very oh. cool. Okay, that is fair. That is a good reason, I guess, not to go to the CrossFit Games. I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get a pass next year, though, because you you need to plan around the games like the rest of us. I will be there next year for sure. Okay, we'll hold you to it. (laughs) Are we going to do an episode live from Fort Worth? Oh, we could absolutely (sighs) arrange that, and then we'll just have to like phone James in. But maybe we'll just leave him in the waiting room. (laughs) We'll bring him in every now and then. (laughs) I like that. We'll have to see. We'll host All it right, over guys. at the proven host it over at the proven booth. Hey, Tim, if you give us a space to host the show, we will absolutely do it there. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to Nick. Wow. Okay. Talk, talk to your people. We'll organize it. It'll be a good time. We'll have it in person. Maybe people can come watch. Let's play Death by. Topic one, our first taste of what we'll see at the CrossFit Games has been revealed. Athletes will take on the Hero Workout. Chad, it's 1,000 weighted box step-ups for time, 45 pounds for the men, 35 for the women, but both with a 20-inch box. But remember, this is the CrossFit Games, and Dave Castro said there will be a twist. So we're going to go around the horn and talk about what you guys think those predictions are for the twist James Hobart, we are going to start round one with you. Oh, he man. Left. Maybe Adrian Bosman is going to run out onto the floor and, and just Rochambeau somebody if they don't lock their knees out. That's what I'm hoping the twist is. Um, you know, it was I was talking to some friends about this. They were saying things like burpee box jumps. Um, maybe the twist, you know. I imagine it has to be a a rucksack, so maybe they're not going to change the implement. Maybe they do have to hold something else. Maybe it is a slightly higher box, which would be devastating because I've tried not full Chad, but variations of Chad with different reps of the higher box. And like the 24 inch box, at least for my short self, is a complete game changer. So, I mean, the one thing I hope they do and I imagine they do, and this isn't really a twist, but is, you know, having it an advancement of the box as they progress throughout the thousand reps to really lay out the the race because I think that would make this a lot more exciting but that's all I got there I don't know I don't know what else they could do in terms of a twist for the for this one um, that would still stay really close to the single modality nature for the workout so maybe add in a burpee that's about it that's all I got (laughs) that's all you got for today (laughs) I mean what else what else could it be you know I don't know I mean, you know Dave Castro, I feel like, more than most of us, but you're only going to get one point for that answer, James. That's okay. It was a one-point answer. Um, I'm, I'm here for it. Slow start on a Tuesday. <laughs> Tim, what do you think the twist is going to be? What would you like it to be? Uh, a different workout? No. Um, I'm just kidding. It's a it's a very, 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 I like the messaging behind the workout, obviously, you know, kind of 10 out of 10. Um, but I think the twist is going to be nothing that fundamentally changes the workout, because if I 
if I'm playing in Dave Castro's mind, it's he wants it to be something the community could do alongside the games athletes if they wanted to, to make it a very like integrated style event. You know, we've seen those in the past in variations at the game. So I don't think the workout itself changes at all. I think it's step ups. I think they're wearing a ruck. I think that's it. I just think that there's going to be some kind of benchmark for a first part event, you know, whether it's a 50 pointer or a hundred pointer, um, you know, whether it's the halfway point or the first hundred reps or something like that, I could see something where there's an additional scored component, kind of like the, what was it? The 2k row into the half marathon back in 2014 or whatever that was 13. So that would be my guess for the twist is just that there's a checkpoint where athletes are going to get scored. My follow-up to that would be that it's not going to be too early on because if you have people race the first hundred reps, then you're going to have even more judging nightmares than you may already have because you're now asking them to go fast, not just slog through a thousand step ups. So my guess would be at least like halfway through, probably like the first 500 reps or the first 400 reps, something like that will be your first score. Do you think that this is a way of redemption for athletes from the quarterfinals box step ups? I'm going to give Pat Vellner's Instagram post a 10 out of 10. If you haven't seen it, go look at it. He basically was like right. just taking shots at himself. He's like, I'll figure it out by the time we get to the games. I promise. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I do think this is definitely a doubling down of like, oh, you guys screwed this up. Well, guess what? Now you're going to have to really figure it out. <laughs> Three points for Tim. Leo, what do you think about this one? Okay, so Dave has said that there's going to be a twist to um, appease some of the concerns that people have. And I think some of the concerns are about viewability, watchability. Um, and I think some of the concerns are about the step up fiasco in quarterfinals. So I think the whatever the twist is to fix the judging issues, I would expect something like a box step over or I've heard people suggesting like maybe there's going to be a target above their head that they have to touch every rep to make sure that they're getting full extension on the box. Um, what I think would be super cool is if it's Friday night at the uh, football stadium and they're doing a thousand stadium steps with a ruck. I think that would be uh, a cool variation of it. And it would match the original intent of the workout because Chad did this workout to train for climbing a mountain and stadium steps are a great way to train for that. Um, the, the fact that the, when they announced it, they said it was going to be a 20 inch box makes that probably less likely. Um, but still anything could happen. So who knows? I like that thought. Do we know how tall the stadium seats no are? Um, Four points, but uh, James, Can his I, hand is in the air. I figured it out. I know what the twist is. Um, Are you trying or, to earn more than your one point? No, I don't have to get any points, I, I, but I just thought of this. And I really like that idea about the stadium. But I think what would be really cool is to have this play into the cuts. So like as and I don't think I don't think the game team or Dave or any of those guys would do this because I think they want to have everyone finish a hero workout from start to finish. But yeah. it'd be really cool. Like. If at certain parts of the event, they basically, if you weren't, hadn't progressed far enough or you were in the back, you know, whatever, 10 or something like that, they just cut people off. So it's like if you're not at a certain point, like 200 step ups at X minutes, you get cut off. And then if you don't get to 500 step ups at X minutes, you get cut off. So there'd be like a kind of like last athlete standing kind of thing. I think that would be really cool. And that would make it really exciting. Too. But that would mean the people who get the cut volume. early on are doing so much less work. So if they're still continuing on in the rest of the competition. Yeah, that's I meant cut out of the competition. <laughs> like that'll be like what progresses them into the oh, rest of the just like like the, the rest of the competition doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It's just Chad. Just Chad. <laughs> yeah, it's just that. <laughs> You're Savage, sad. James. <laughs> I don't know. You know, that's what I'm here for. Maybe whoever's in last. Maybe Go like ahead, the Tim. bottom five, every hundred reps get like shot with a water cannon or something. So then it's like really entertaining. <laughs> if you're in the back, you just get blasted with a water cannon or a fire hose. Like that's your, that's your punishment. <laughs> but yeah, maybe this is point, when they bring the rifle that... back. <laughs> the, oh. <laughs> so there's shooting <laughs> while you're doing step ups. 
the the hero workout, I mean, any hero workout has such a powerful meeting and it's something that if you're a CrossFitter and have done it, you know that you're doing it for a bigger purpose, but also keeping in mind that it is the CrossFit games and we have a component of viewability, uh, watchability and entertainment. So how do you stay within the um, confinement of, we want to do something that keeps the roots of the hero workout and respect the hero workout, but give a little bit more entertainment value. Do you add a burpee? Do you make it stairs? Do you have a checkpoint? Like, do you have a variation of Chad? Like, what is the solution to to make it entertainment for the viewers? Well, I, I think the stairs is is really spot on. You know, and I just because I feel like it shows like application outside of a gym, which is really important. And then to your point, it it um. It maintains the spirit of what the workout originally was. I think that would be really cool. And it would sort of, um, and again, I think that reinforces the, hey, you could do this anywhere kind of concept, which I think is a powerful one for this workout, Chad, and and how it's been promoted and I think what it means to a lot of people. So that's a really cool idea. I really like it. Yeah, I agree. I, I think we, we have been. One. I stole it from a friend. <laughs> well, you nailed it. So I would take all the credit. Yeah. No, we have been. As like the the coaching team, like we've been chatting about that as well, wondering if it would be at the stadium event and it would be stairs. But like, a lot, I agree. I think a lot of us are just like it gets too far from what the workout is actually written and prescribed as. And generally, in the past, when they've done girl workouts or hero workouts at regionals or the games, they stay pretty true because again, I think, I think the more important principle for Dave. I mean, he's the one who programmed a marathon row. That wasn't exactly entertaining to watch. Like. I think having one event where it's like, you know what, it's fitness, we're doing the test, you know, we're not going to put it on ESPN and having it, I think the the, the more powerful theme will be the, the hero workout itself and being approachable mm-hmm. by the community rather than like, I think they're honestly just willing to write this off. Like, we don't give a shit if you don't watch it. Like, go ahead, don't, you know, it's a good, it's a test of fitness. I've picked it and say what you want, but it's happening. That that's my that's my thought on it. Okay. Yeah. I mean when you have twelve to fifteen tests, do all of them have to be super entertaining to the audience? No, I mean I, I think every year at the games there's one or two that either you can't really watch because it's like because of either camera angles or whatever, or it's just like again, there's just a test that like you know, I, I would say the crit race was exciting to watch. Those bike races, because you're just waiting for someone to explode and run into each other. But like, you know, again, there's the marathon row. There's certain running events that are just like, you know, they're just not that entertaining. And it's okay. You know, not every event has to be entertaining as long as it tells the story. And, you know, running event, having the monitor for the marathon row where the boats advance and you could see people. Like, as long as there's a, a race and a story being told, I don't think Dave or the, the, the games team minds if an event is boring. I don't. I mean, I think that's fine as well. Again, as long as the other 14 events or whatever are all exciting and they're the ones that go on TV, it's all right. I think the the danger comes in when you have one that's not necessarily exciting to watch, like a marathon row or something like that. Um, that becomes what people latch on to. And now when we're trying to get new people to watch the sport, it's like, well, why would I watch somebody sit on a rower for three hours and like trying to get them to understand it's not just that. Um, mm-hmm. And because that's just what be like blows up in the conversations around, oh, my God, why would they program a three hour row at the gates? Yeah, that's like I think all of it comes like to me, all of it just comes back to like, look what these athletes can do. It's like, I mean, like crew is a sport. Like people watch people row boats all the time. Like there are people that like that. I don't, I personally, I don't like watching people <laughs> row and row in boats, but you know, it's like some people like it. So I think a lot of it just comes back to like, Hey, look how, look how crazy fit our athletes are. They stepped up on this box a thousand times. It's the equivalent of climbing this mountain. And then they also went and did 14 other events in a 72 hour span. You know, I think that becomes the greater story, but CrossFit has to tell that story. So mm-hmm. we'll see if they decide to wrap it all up in a pretty bow like that. Yeah, I think the storytelling piece is the big one is like, just like a longer event, like a triathlon or a true marathon, 
you're not going to watch the whole thing soup to nuts. Like you're going to focus on most people probably watch the highlights that could be done here. And if they can engage the community in a specific way or people at the event in a way where it's like everyone is doing chat at the same time. I don't know. I think there's a big opportunity to like make this exciting in other ways, but um, we'll see. We I'll, will see. Time will tell. Thought. His yeah. Uh, what James was what James was saying. I think also a twist might be like having some like active military members do the workout like off to the mm -hmm. side, like not necessarily on the field, maybe even on the field with the athletes. But like, I don't know. Like I think having like again drawing it all together in a pretty bow, where it's like, okay, this is why we're doing the workout. These are the people we're honoring, and they kind of like pull it all together in a nice bow like that. I could see that being a part of it as well. I like that idea. That that does put the nice bow on top. And from a broadcast perspective, could be a really interesting storytelling. James, will you be able to answer a question for this next one? I know you're running on a tight time. Oh, no, let's just, let's do it. I, you know, just going <laughs> to risk life and I'm going to risk life and limb for you guys. Let, the show goes on. <laughs> the, sh the show goes on. James is going to stay with us for a bit longer. Topic number two, the CrossFit Games cut schedule. We've already alluded to it. It's been released with the entire field of 40 men and 40 women competing through Saturday morning. The field will then be cut to 30 for the remaining events on Saturday. Still unknown how many. And then down to 20 at the start of Sunday. But what do you need to see tested before that field starts to get cut down? Tim, we will let you start round number two. So many thoughts. Um, Let's I mean, I hear think the big, no, I think the biggest thing to me, not necessarily what needs to be tested, but more like what needs to be taken into consideration by the games team is like how the scoring system changes and how you program outlier events. Like that's the biggest thing to me is do you put single modality tests where you know for a fact that you're testing one specific element um, and just like, how do you do that? And do you plan it very effectively? You know, like, again, whether you put the heavy clean ladder or the speed clean ladder, whatever it is, do you put that after there's only 20 athletes left and, you know, all the weak people don't get penalized for that. You know, like you don't want to see people get biased on the test because of how far they advance through the weekend. So I think for me, it's not what needs to be tested. It's more like what not needs to be tested. Like before the cuts, as much CrossFit as humanly possible, like as much classic core variants where the people who are the fittest who have a good dose of strength have a good dose of gymnastics capacity they're also very fit and you get to show all of that so if you're going to do some heavier events have them be heavier workouts if you're going to do a handstand medley event put that inside the confines of a workout where it's not the limiting factor it's not the be all end all and fitness you know overall fitness still kind of reigns supreme so that the people that make it to the final 20 are the most well-rounded athletes. And then you get to showcase, okay, do you have some outlandish skills, some events that look really cool on TV, things like that. Um, that would be my, like, I don't know. That's, I think, how it should flow if I were the one kind of pulling all the strings. Three points for Tim. Elia? Okay, I've talked about this before, and I just do not support <laughs> cuts at all. Um, there's a lot of reasons why I don't, but in terms of programming, I think if you are cutting the field, everybody talks about, well, you need to make sure that you're testing an appropriate breadth of CrossFit and fitness before you cut. And if you're saying, Hey, we're going to cut you guys out because we don't think that you're going to have an impact on the overall standings after this point that implies that you've already done a complete test. So why not just end the test there? Um, why would you continue after you're cutting people out? You know, we don't, we don't do cuts at semifinals. We make semifinals a complete test before we cut people to take to the games. So why wouldn't you let everybody at the games participate in the complete test? If you're saying that this total test is what is going to determine who is the fittest on earth, um, everybody should be taking the same test. It's the reason why we wanted all the semifinals workouts to be standardized across the semifinals. Everybody should be taking the same test. Everybody taking all the tests. I mean, that's the correct answer, but... Uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> we have talked about it before, and I, I'm glad you brought it up because now I'm going to pose you the question. So would you prefer that 
they just start the field with 20 athletes, no cuts. Yes. I think, I think no matter what size the field is, it just needs to stay that size for the whole competition. I think 20 is fine. I think 40 is fine. Just keep it the same for the whole competition. I would agree with that. That's unanimous. Just keep it the same the whole time. Uh, I don't, I like, mm, (laughs) do I like cuts? I don't know. I like the idea of, yeah. Two points Sorry. didn't necessarily answer the question, but I I like when we go through the ebbs and flows. So, uh, James, go ahead. You can, take it wherever you want. <laughs> right to the right to the dumpster where I usually go. Um, no, I mean I I am in favor of a smaller games field overall, and I, that's hard for me to say because I was a mediocre individual games athlete, but going there was such an incredibly special experience for me. Um, and what I and there are people now who are. You know, even whoever gets last at the games now is a hundred times fittest than I fitter than I ever was. But my point is, like, I think it would be more exciting to watch a smaller field, and I think there's more opportunity to do more interesting things with a smaller group of athletes throughout the weekend. And I think that's some of the reason for the cuts is to like draw more attention, you know, be able to make the events a little bit more, I don't know, in depth and logistically intensive with a smaller field. So at this stage, I don't mind the cuts, but I am sensitive to that reason of reasoning of, hey, let everyone take the entire test, see where they fall, let them make their money if they're there, you know, if they could make some money. Because of that, I kind of fall into to Tim's camp of, hey, we need to have as well-rounded tests as possible. And I think back to the year we had the international champions, the 2019, I think, whenever they had the first cut event, there was like run, legless rope, climb, yeah. snatch, like events like that should just lead up to the cuts. And then after the cuts, I totally agree. I think the single modality stuff is is more appropriate from a scoring weight percentage. But at the same time, the downside of that is it's really it's typically easier to run a large group of people through the single modality events. So we're probably still going to see some of those up front. I can't imagine them doing Chad after the cuts, um, even though I think that would be cool. I like my idea of using Chad as the event where like, hey, if you don't make it to certain checkpoints in Chad at a certain time, you're cut from the competition. But, you know, I'm also insane, so I can respect that. But I like the most well-rounded events possible up front. I think that makes sense. Save the single modality stuff for much later in the weekend. Okay, three points for James. So how would you guys like the format to be? Chad is the deciding factor whether you get cut before the first cut. So like that would be the last event on Saturday morning, essentially. I mean, I think if you do it that, so here's, here's, so combining some ideas, like having cuts throughout Chad, it would be easier if that, like, uh, I still don't like, I still honestly don't like all the athletes not doing the whole workout, but you could theoretically do it. If it was the last event before you cut it down, it's Mm -hmm. like, okay, at 400 step ups, you've earned as many points in this event as you can. So you're now like you're done. And theoretically, that would incentivize the people who are near the cut line to drop the hammer on Chad because they don't want to get cut and potentially lose points on the back half of the workout. But then at the end of the day, someone then the guy in fifth could theoretically mail it in at 500 step up so that he could be way fresher for the rest after the cuts because he knows how safe he is. Not that athletes would do that. So I still think there's too much logistically that just would make that would make that impossible. I I agree. I think a smaller, if you want to have cuts, just cut the games field now, like cut it now to less people. Like if you want to, if you want to have an easier time programming, storytelling, all that stuff, just bring less people to the games and give people more opportunities to compete and make a name for themselves outside of the games. It's, it's that simple really on like to me. I think we've talked about it on a previous episode and and we have talked about do you want cuts or not and that's why that wasn't the topic today but if there's new people listening or watching death by we'll we'll kind of circle it back uh what about the theory of having or the concept of having cuts at semifinals i think that makes more sense because the field the depth of the field at semifinals is widely more variable than the depth of the field at the games largely speaking like if you take out the considerations for the games field and some countries being less developed competitively and things like that, where like, you know, not I'm not shit talking any regions, but athlete, like you know those athletes will tend to have a harder time at the games historically. Whereas like semifinals, 
you know, I think more so it's like the bottom 10, 20 at semifinals are legitimately not vying for game spots. Like, like I think that generally, like, you could look at it like that, but you still come back to the problem of just the balanced test. Like, you still come back to the problem of everybody having an opportunity yeah. to do their good events, to survive their bad events, and to try and punch their ticket. So I think it all just comes down to we need to figure out the field size that works best for every stage of competition, and we need to design the test and people take the test. And I think that's – yeah, and like I said, then we just give athletes more opportunities to compete. So if you don't make this one, go try this one. Like, you know, but I think the fields and the tests needs to reign supreme. And again, we're we're testing broad fitness across fitness across broad, broad time and modal domains. And like we need to do that. Like that's that's what the whole test needs to be. And if you don't take the whole test, it's like if you only go to class three days a week at your affiliate, are you going to get fitter? Yes. But you're also going to miss out on a whole bunch of shit. So if you want to be as well-rounded as possible, you try to make it as many days as possible. Like. Yeah. And I think going back to cuts at semifinals, like if just looking at this year, the way that the leaderboard completely changed from the beginning of the weekend to the end of the weekend, like I don't think there's enough tests at semifinals in order to justify cuts. Um, You know, I know there were at least at my semifinal, there were girls going into the beginning of day three who started the day in the second heat. And by the end of the day, they qualified for the games. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. thinking about cutting the bottom 20 those would be people who eventually ended up qualifying for the games by the end of sunday so i i don't think i think if you're gonna do cuts there has to be more events and so the games is the most appropriate place to do it just because of the, the number of events but i still just don't like them. <laughs> so elia let me ask you this because you're a regular semi-finalist on the bubble for the games would you then prefer to say that they still had 40, you qualify for the CrossFit games and they cut, or would you prefer to keep working to earn top 20 if they were to only take 20 to the games and have no cuts? Um, I would prefer, I like the field of 40, uh, even if they are going to cut it, I like the field of 40 just because um, it like, making the games even as a bottom tier athlete allows you more opportunities to continue training to become top 20. If you're never making it, you lose out on a lot of those opportunities. Um, And so like, it's like, if you think about, you know, the specialist athlete that shows up to the games and they're going to be probably bottom 10, bottom 15, but they might have one event that they just absolutely dominate that could be a sponsorship opportunity for them. If a sponsor sees that and sees them just shining in a single event, it might be the only event that weekend that they're anywhere outside of 35th to 40th, but Mm. it's a cool opportunity for them to, you know, pick up sponsor and be able to continue training to then get out of that 35th to 40th spot. And I Good think point. that brings back the whole the whole picture of like broadening the broadening the competitive sphere outside of the games because again I think the sport becomes more watchable if there's less people at events period like or less athletes not people like but you know like if there's less <laughs> less we athletes need more at people events, there Tim <laughs> we do please but you know it's like the sport becomes more watchable if you're telling stories about 20 people it's one of the reasons some people have a hard time following golf it's like why are there 80 people in the field and you talk about 3 you know, it's like it like it doesn't it, it's hard to like rectify sometimes. But like, you know, I think same thing CrossFit. If there's only a field of 20, but there's multiple premier events with different qualifying processes and things like that, it's like then again, people who are on the bubble, you have more opportunities to get out there. And that's really what sponsors want. They want more mm-hmm. opportunities for you to plaster their shit all over the place. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, when you have the games is the end all be all the one that matters. If you're not going to the games, unless you've got a hundred thousand followers or more on social media, you're not going to have those opportunities. But if you compete more and you're, you know, it's more well broadcasted, stories are told, things like that, then those opportunities present themselves for those up and coming athletes, for those athletes trying to break through. Yeah, and it's funny. It's like my lizard brain still just loves like (laughs) when just a random athlete destroys some single modality event. Like Mm -hmm. I do kind of the the cuts sort of bum me out when I'm like, oh man, watching so and so, you know, in this event would have been amazing. There and that's just super selfish, you know, reason to dictate how the game's structure is is made. But 
I do love seeing that kind of stuff. Like it's it's so fun to watch this. But those crazy big stuff. moments are really cool. Like who doesn't want to see Guy snatch whatever his max snatch whatever he is. wants I, to that day, he, just whatever he feels like. <laughs> yeah, and make it look so crisp yeah. and beautiful. And I'm like, I can't even do that with a PVC pipe and look that good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. Th- agree to disagree we're trying to solve world problems here we'll move on to (laughs) topic number three still about the games but not about this year's games in one of dave castro's athlete interviews with laura horvath he alluded that the crossfit games will move to europe in 2027 so where would be that ideal location in europe to host and why do you think that is the place elia you will start our third and final route So I think um, two places that would make a lot of sense would be either France or Germany. I think both of those uh, countries have shown a lot of success with hosting CrossFit events over the past couple of years. Um, I know the semifinal in France this year was absolutely insane. I wasn't there, but from everybody who was there, they said it was so cool to be in that atmosphere, that environment. The crowd showed up. um, They were bought in. super cool place to host that and from at least from what i know france and germany seem to be easy places to get to if you're not already there um but i also think it would be super cool to see the games in iceland um just because icelandic athletes have been so prevalent at the top level of the sport for so long Uh, i think that would be a cool homage to you know, all the daughters and sons that we've seen at the games. And I can just imagine the entire island of Iceland just plastered in CrossFit for a week. (laughs) I think that would be really cool. Oh, I never... It's so funny because even with the hard-hitting athletes that we have from Iceland, that never crossed my mind. I really like that answer. I'm going to give you five points for that one. Is Iceland really Europe, I think that would be interesting. What? (laughs) I said, is Iceland really Europe, though? Technically, yeah. yes. Well, I know. I'm, the, I'm kidding. They're not, they're not on the Euro, but I don't think that. Yeah, they're not on the Euro. They're not in the, I mean, they might be in, the, they're in Europe. I don't know. I need to go back to world geography. It's been a minute. <laughs> Actually, I don't, I'm going to fact check myself. Okay, are, are you going to Google search it first? If Iceland is Europe? Oh, well, they're not in the European Union. They're not. But it's still Europe. Yeah, I mean, hey, let's let's outside of the U.S. is good enough for me. I, I'm I'm going if they're hosting the games in Iceland. I'm going. So that'd be awesome. Okay, that's it's, gonna it's... convince James to go. He doesn't want to go to Fort Worth, Texas, but he will go to Iceland in 2027. Yeah. Okay, James, you're up next. Where do you want to see the Lux- games in Europe? Luxembourg. Luxembourg. That's easy. Okay. Super centrally located. Um, high high quality of life there. I feel like it's relatively tourist friendly. Um, I think, what was the other thing? I feel like they have really good public transportation there from some people I've asked about this, but I feel like that's a lot of cities in Europe. But I just, the central location of it, I think is really cool. It's an unexpected place to have it. So I'm all for it. Games in Europe in Europe would be amazing. They could film like a Euro trip documentary. That's all I got on that one. I'm down. Though, of friends who, <laughs> judged and participated both in the madrid regionals and the berlin regionals they did say they had incredible parties in both places so i don't so know we're any, thinking any about the three, after party. absolutely absolutely <laughs> <laughs> like any three of those places i mean my comp- competitive days are far beyond me so i'm there just for you know he james just wants the games in hedonism. amsterdam yeah you, oh gosh i don't know if that would be a good city for it though but yeah, there you go. Madrid, Luxembourg, or uh, Berlin. Thinking about the after party, I'm going to give you four points for that because that's really the final test. Who will survive <laughs> the last one? Tim, what are your thoughts here? All right. I think there's one correct answer for this. But Ooh, I do think it. from a fan perspective, I agree. There's definitely like, you know, Barcelona, like Spain, you know, like some of these other countries in Europe have a very passionate sporting fan base that would make the games, I think, really cool to be hosted there. But to me, I think the correct answer is Norway because their government already sponsors CrossFit. Like 
a lot of the Scandinavian countries are already like they're gov- they have there are athletes training CrossFit, the sport of CrossFit, and getting government money and funding to do so. So it's like if you want to talk about bringing the games to a place where CrossFit is already pretty well supported by the government, they they would probably get some money from the government to host the games there, to be a part of it, plastered all over the place, things like that. I think, yeah, my my vote would be Norway. There's a ton of outdoor, obviously, like amazing outdoor things that you could be doing, especially if the games are in the summer when the weather's nicer. You wouldn't have any issues with like a dreadful winter and things like that. You have plenty of daylight. And also my Scandinavian blood would be very, would be very happy about it and would give me an excuse to go to Norway. I haven't, haven't been to Norway yet. So, but anyway, that's my answer. I like that. I'm going to give you four points for that answer because I like the support from the government. And I think that that could have a lot of carryover to projecting the sport. Um, This might be a little bit off topic, but still in the same vein. Any idea of what the impact CrossFit and the games will have when it does leave the U S since this is where it started. This is where it's founded. A lot of the brands are from the U S uh, what kind of impact comes, comes to mind when it does go to Europe. I think there's going to be a lot of impact on the, you said it, the brands we see in the space, because I think um, so much of what we see right now is U S based because those are the brands that can actually get out to the events to set up booths, to, you know, be vendors at these events. Um, there's been, uh, I've, I've worked vendor village for three years at the games now, and I've talked to some vendors from other countries and they are like, we can never do this again because it's so expensive just to ship our stuff here. Um, and so I think the U S brands are going to face some of that when it goes to Europe, but it's going to give the opportunity for, a lot of European brands to now come into the space and, uh, you know, make a name for themselves. Um, we saw it a little bit with Northern spirit at semifinals, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. they're from France and that was kind of their opportunity to break into the U S market. Um, so I, I think the biggest shift is going to be in just the brands that we start to see represented in the space. Yeah, I would agree. I think just like, but in, I think in a good way, like, again, a lot of like sports need broad exposure. It's like you see the NFL going to South America, going to London, yeah. going to you know, like they're trying to increase the brand's viability abroad and like get new eyes on it. And granted, I don't know, like CrossFit's not big enough to do that same thing. But again, I think if you're getting on local networks in Europe and things like that, it's like, again, it's only going to increase the exposure of the sport and show that the sport itself is whether rightly or not on good sound footing. You know, like I think it'll it'll present a better face of the sport that it's not just this American thing. And especially with like the the I mean, not resurgence, but, you know, with the strength of some of these other, you know, non-U.S. based athletes, it's probably it's coming up in well past time that it goes somewhere else. Do you think that we would then see a I know that we don't have like technically a title sponsor this year, but similar to you know, what go ruck is doing, or if we bring back a main title sponsor, do you think it would be somebody in Europe then like first comes to mind, obviously Northern spirit, because of what we've seen them do this year, but even pixel is big in Europe. Do you think that one of them would, would take the charge on that? Or one of the bigger U S brands would still invest. I mean, I think the sport of CrossFit has to show the value that you get from being a title sponsor, because that shit is expensive. Like, you know, I think that comes back to just the health of the sport as a whole is like, and I mean, I don't know if chicken or the egg, why we're having more smaller sponsors, less tight. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I think, again, it's just like the the bang for your buck and the direction of the sport of CrossFit needs to be valid enough for someone like that to really step in and want to throw millions of dollars at the prize purse, things like that. So I think, I mean, maybe that, that's a little pessimistic. Sorry to. <laughs> start to wrap the show up on a on a down note but yeah i think you have to show you have to show viability and a strong trajectory for the sport of crossfit for someone to someone really big to want to come in and throw a bunch of money at it i think that's also like it's it's not necessarily all crossfit's decision if that makes sense i think it's going to sure. be like you know they have uh bear complex is the grip sponsor right now but you, you know you just said pixel is big in europe Okay, so if the games go to Europe, does Bear Complex want to go to Europe? 
would they cut that relationship that they've already spent so much time developing just to pick up a European grip sponsor? Um, would they, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, th I, th I think it's a multi-way conversation and I think it could change depending on who they're talking to. What about a sponsor like Red Bull? I don't know about you guys, but to me, when I'm in the U.S., I feel like I never see Red Bull. And maybe it's just the the content I'm consuming, the sports that I'm watching. But then I go to Europe and it seems like it's everywhere. And especially uh, with Yonikoski and Laura Horvath, I think they're both Red Bull sponsors. Is is that a brand that could potentially get behind CrossFit on a bigger scale, do you think? I mean, I just think about Monster sponsoring the games a couple of years ago <laughs> and how people got so upset about that. Um, I think, you know, it's a it's a balance of they're going to have a lot of money to throw at CrossFit. But is that something that the community is going to support? Hmm. I mean, I Red know. Bull. I guess Monster is as well, but like Red Bull has been, I mean, to me, like I grew up, I liked extreme sports as a kid. Like I was into snowboarding, I skateboarded a decent bit. Like, I mean, Red Bull to me is just synonymous with like extreme sports, fringe sports, like yeah. tour style sports, things like that, racing, like, you know, rally cars. So I guess to me, I mean, I don't know, I guess partially people stop getting so upset over freaking everything um, would be kind of the first, <laughs> would be the first thing I would say. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, th I think like, again, that's where the sport of CrossFit and CrossFit, the methodology would benefit from parting ways a little bit. It's like, yeah, the sport of CrossFit is not necessarily about eat nuts, fruit, seeds, like, you know, like that's not the sport of CrossFit. Like the sport of CrossFit is the methodology, the fitness application that we use, the types of workouts that we do. So like we need to have broader sponsors that are just willing to bring money in here, even if they don't directly align 100 percent with the values of the methodology, because the mm -hmm. games is, again, like, yes, it's a training methodology, but like when we're talking about the lifestyle aspect of CrossFit, like that comes back to the affiliates and the CrossFit medical and all that stuff. So I would have zero problem. And I, I mean, I could see Red Bull doing it. Like, I think CrossFit would be a good fit for Red Bull, like any, yeah. whether they think that or not. When I think about Red Bull, I think about the guy like parachuting out of a spaceship or the guy like oh, yeah. jumping 20 cars on a flaming motorcycle. And if CrossFit <laughs> could be associated with, with that kind of stuff, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> that oh, yeah. is pretty cool. <laughs> My associations with Red Bull are late night college nights that have nothing to do with sports. <laughs> Again, another after. activity. That's the after party activity. <laughs> Red Bull can sponsor the after party for sure. <laughs> ah, now we're on to something. <laughs> I was going to say, I, don't th I think people would be less upset about it. If you're like Red Bull Vodka sponsors the CrossFit Games, like that would be a little <laughs> bit more potable than a monster. No one drinks monster with vodka shooter. I mean, maybe serial killers, but. Ooh. <laughs> if anybody's listening and does that, apparently you're a serial killer. Also, if you don't like dogs, serial killer. Tim, also, you are the winner of this episode. Um, I know we've kind of gone off the rails, talked about a bunch of different topics, but 30 seconds, topic of your choosing whenever you're ready. Uh, honestly, I'm just going to shout out the games. And like, I'm excited to see it in a new place. You know, I think I was lucky enough to be a part of the games the entire time that it was in Madison. Um, but I've, I guess for me on a personal standpoint, I'm excited to go see the games as a spectator, as a coach, as someone who's involved, not from the athletic side of things, it's going to be a fun new experience for me. Um, so yeah, I guess, I don't know. I just got to kind of give some props to the games. I'm excited to see it in a new place. I'm excited to see how it all unfolds a little sour that I'm not going to, you know, get to experience as an athlete for the first time in a while, but Hey, life moves on. And so will I, so anyway, I'm just excited about the games and it's going to be fun. Tim, there's nothing that says you can't do the workouts to the side. Chad, for instance, we could well, get I'm... you a box and a ruck. <laughs> oh, I've already been, as the resident fitness coach for Proven, I've already been bullied into lots of testing at various points. So happily bullied, I'll say. So I will be doing happily. Chad in the very near future to help get a data point for some <laughs> for some people. But I think that would also, be pretty cool. I'll, I'll do Chad for the games. If you just set up a way to do the games workouts at the Proven booth 
or modified versions that there you could you do within the booth. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> We're going to have some cool stuff at the booth. Everyone come visit the Proven Booth if you're going to the games. Okay, and we, we might host a live Death by episode there too if, if Tim can pull some strings for us. We'll That's put him it. on that. If that doesn't work out, we can do, we can uh, do it at the assault booth. <laughs> okay, perfect. We got plenty of options here. <laughs> Elia, Tim, thank you guys so much. James is gone because he also isn't coming to the games, so it's just the three of us <laughs> and our other this contestants. Makes more sense. But it does. It does. But thank you both as always for being guests, playing along. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We are now in the crunch time before the CrossFit Games. I'm sure more information will be released. We'll have some great timely topics. Um, ESPN is also signing on for another year with the CrossFit Games, so you can expect uh, coverage there. But uh, thanks again, and congratulations to Tim. We'll see you guys next time.